Hey guys, it's Belinda again. Welcome to part two of my New York City Teen Authors Festival book haul, and I will now be showing you all the hardcovers that I got autographed this past week. And I will start with my last and my last David Levithon book that I got autographed. And here we have Every Day by David Levithon. This is the story about A who is a boy who every day wakes up in a different body and a different life and he goes through them and every single time he falls in love and stays in love with the same girl and this is his story. I have been meaning to pick this up for years but I only recently bought it this past weekend for reasons. <laughs> Probably because I found this for nine dollars at the Strand in New York City when the original price is about $18. Now, if you live in New York City and you don't know what The Strand is, I have absolutely no idea what you are doing with your life. Especially if you are an avid reader. So, if you have never been to The Strand, you should go check it out. There are really cheap books. It's one of the it's like my favorite bookstore in the entire world, and that is saying something. <laughs> I honestly really love The Strand. But yeah, anyways, <laughs> here's the autograph for my last and final book from David Levithon. And it says, to Belinda, Lee, love every, well, live every day in wonder. Smiley face, David Levithon. So yeah, those are all my Le David Levithon books. On to my next two. Here, I have my two books by Rainbow Rowell, Eleanor and Park, and Fangirl. Oh, wait, let me switch. Okay. <laughs> Elnor and Park and Fangirl. I read Elnor and Park first. I actually bought this a couple months ago, but obviously if I'm going to meet Rainbow Rowell, I'm going to bring this and also buy Fangirl. I initially also wanted to buy Attachments, but I couldn't find it anywhere in my bookstores, including Strand, which saddened me deeply. <laughs> so I had to stick with these two. But hopefully by the next time she hopefully comes to New York City, I will have attachments along with Landline, which will be her next book. But yeah, let's get on with the books I do own. This is Eleanor and Park. This is a story about two misfits in love. As you can tell, it is about Eleanor and Park. This is Eleanor. That's Park. <laughs> and basically, it is their love story. Their first love story in their high school as two people that don't exactly fit in with the rest of the crowd. And it's funny, it's sweet, it is heartbreaking because of Eleanor's living situation. And I absolutely adore Park and he was my last book boyfriend because honestly you cannot go wrong with a Korean Taekwondo butt kicking boyfriend. <laughs> so if you haven't read this, if you haven't heard of it, I really suggest you check it out because they are that. It is that wonderful. And I will show you Rainbow's autograph. Belinda, there's only one of you. Rainbow. I actually like her handwriting. It's kind of like mine. Okay, so my second Rainbow Rowell book is Fangirl. <laughs> Now, I'm quite sure a lot of you guys have seen this as well, your Rainbow fans, and as you can tell from the title, it is about a fangirl named Kath, and her and her sister are just starting college, and she is the biggest Simon Snow fan. She writes fan fiction for Simon Snow, she reads them, she's just the biggest Simon Snow nerd, and her sister used to be like her, but her sister is kind of moving on past that while Kat is still stuck in this world of Simon Snow. Oh, FYI, Simon Snow is basically like the Harry Potter fandom for our real world. In this world, Simon Snow is like on par with Harry Potter. And there is a boy whose name is... <laughs> Shoot. Shoot, shoot. Oh, friend. Yes. <laughs> there is a boy named Ren who is a real life boy and he's interested in Kath and she doesn't notice because she's too busy with Simon Snow. And this is basically Kath's story of maybe letting go of 
her rock that is Min Simon Snow and opening herself up to the wonderful life of college and to Ren and to maybe move on like her sister did. And I've heard great things about this. I haven't read it yet. I look really I'm really looking forward to reading this because I've been wanting to pick this up for a while and meeting Rainbow Rowell at the festival was just like my incentive to buy it because like, oh, I can't just bring Eleanor Park, I have to bring Fangirl as well. <laughs> so yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. Um, oh, so I will show you the autograph now. Belinda, you don't do magic. You are magic, Rainbow. Oh, and also a bookmark with the cover of attachments on it. So yeah, there's that. Okay, on to my next three books. Now, Victoria Schwab was also at the festival, and boy, was I excited to meet her. I was actually kind of worried, too, because she was also down with the stomach flu for part of the week. But she got better on Sunday, which was when I would be meeting her. And so I brought along my three Victoria Schwab books. First up, I have Vicious, which is her adult novel. It's not a young adult novel. It's her adult novel, and she writes it under the name V.E. Schwab to differentiate herself, I guess. And this is the only book I have completely read by her so far and it was my first Victoria Shaw book and I love it to pieces it is really really great it is a story about two former college roommates and best friends who 20 years later now want to kill each other and it's told in a really interesting way it's told in both the past and through flashbacks and the present so yeah the two the two roommates who want to kill each other are Victor and Eli, by the way. Wait, was I right? Was I right? Yes, Victor and Eli. I was right. <laughs> I am personally a fan of Victor, and you will find out why when you read this book. <laughs> it's really interesting, because there are people with superpowers. It's really dark. It's really gritty. Like, there's a reason why this is an adult, not really a young adult novel, because it's a, a lot darker than most young adult novels. But I loved it. And I really suggest picking it up if you guys are a fan of Victoria Schwab. So, here's the autograph. To Belinda, leave your mark, Victoria Schwab. Now, if you are a fan of Victoria Schwab, then you have probably already read these next two books. <laughs> oh, gee, goodness. Okay, these next two books. Yes, the Archived and... The Unbound, which is part of her The Archived series, and these are her young adult novels. She also has The Near Witch, but I haven't read that yet. But yeah, I have The Archived and The Unbound in hardcover. I bought them specifically because I knew she would be coming to the festival. I haven't read them yet. Well, I have started reading The Archived, as you can tell from my Gryffindor bookmark up top here, which I love and was a birthday present to me. <laughs> I started reading this, and this is basically the story of Mackenzie, who is a keeper for the Archived. And there are three separate worlds, the Archived, the Archives, the Outer, and the Narrows. The Outer is our world, the human world. The Archives are where the keepers keep and the librarians keep histories of people who have passed away. They are not necessarily the actual dead people, but they are their histories, their memories of the person who is dead. And the archives is where these bodies are stored. And the narrows is the thin, is the in-between world between the outer and the archives, where histories sometimes escape to. And it is Mackenzie's job to find these histories and put them back before bad things happen. So this is her story, and I just started reading this. It's very interesting. The writing is kind of similar to Vicious, actually. Like, not like of course it's similar because it's both Victoria Schwab's writing. But like, I meant the format. Yeah, <laughs> it's both. It take it's written both in flashbacks and in um, the present time as well. Although the flashbacks are more like Mackenzie talking to to her da. It's not her dad. Not her dad. I think da was like her grandpa. I think or something like that. It's not quite clear yet, but I'm pretty sure it's, like, her grandpa. And, like, he he's passed away, which is why she is now 
the keeper. So, like, during those times, she, like, talks to him, sort of. So, yeah, here's the archived, and here's the Unbound. I won't spoil the, um, I won't say anything about the Unbound, since all I know is that it's a sequel, and I don't want to spoil anything for myself. So, here are the autographs. To Belinda, Nothing is Lost. And my Unbound autograph which is to Belinda. Do you know what is real? So yeah, if you haven't heard of Victoria Schwab, then I really suggest checking out these three books. You will find them down below on my link, along with every other book I will have in this video. <laughs> so yeah, they're my Victoria Schwab's books. Next up, I have... The Winner's Curse by Marie Rutkowski. This is going to be my first book by Marie, and I read about this a while ago on NetGalley. And I read the synopsis, and it was really cool, and I could have had the opportunity to read it on NetGalley before it came out, but I missed my chance, and I was so sad, But so I had to wait for it to come out. And now I finally have it, and wow, is it a pretty book. I honestly love how the girl on the cover like grabs the R and curse. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, yeah, there you go. You can see it. <laughs> and the plotline of the book is basically there is a girl named named Kestrel, and she is the daughter of a general. And basically, she lives in an old world. This is like epic fantasy. Basically, there are kings and queens and generals and all that kind of stuff. And she meets a slave boy named, named Arine. Yes, she, she meets a slave boy named Arine. And, and an instinct tells her to buy him. And they become friends because she seems to find a deep connection with him. And then a lot of shit seems to happen, I think. And, oh, something about, a, about deadly games and, I think, competitions and secrets and love and all that good stuff. And I've heard great things about this novel, and I am honestly really, really excited to start reading it. Because I've been wanting to read it for, like, a few months now. But yeah. Here are my bookmarks that I got as well for The Winter's Curse oh, and The Shadow Society. Yes. Which is one of her other series, I think, which I need to check out as well. But yeah, here is the autographed. For Belinda, play to win, Marie. Now, I'm assuming there is competition in this book. So I'm really looking forward to this one. Okay, next up, we have The Gospel of Winter by Brendan Keeley. Now, I have never heard this book until the festival, but I was there for the Friday night one at the Barnes & Noble's at Union Square. And he, along with six other authors, were there. And they did skits of certain passages in each of their books, and I was really interested about this one, The Gospel of Winter. And it is a story about... what is his name? Ah, yes. 16-year-old Aiden, who has some teenage troubles, as most teenagers do, and he initially finds solace in the town priest. But then, as Christmas comes around, he realizes the true intents and, pur and purposes of the priest which are not good at all, and you can probably guess where I'm going at with here. And so instead he seeks solace in fellow misfit friends of his, who and they basically just talk and share stories, and this is about Dean's coming-of-age story, and dealing with the problems of his life and everything else. And it sounds really funny, actually. Like, <laughs> the teenagers are, like, snarky and funny and stuff, and but... I initially wasn't going to get this, but what really, really sold me in order to buy this book was, in fact, the cover. Now, if you look closely, you will see the silhouette of the boy and the cover with the writing on it. Now, pull this off. Like, you can see that this is transparent. This is transparent. Like, it's a thin, transparent cover. And then what you are left with when you pull the cover off is just the silhouette of the boy, who I am assuming is supposed to be Aiden. Like, that is it. That is it. Even the spine, there is no writing. Everything else is on the sleeve except for Aiden. 
and that is honestly one of the coolest covers I've ever seen. Actually, this is probably the coolest cover I've ever seen, and, like, when I realized this, I was just like, now I have to buy this book in hardcover, because how would they do this in a paperback? And it's just so unbelievably cool. <laughs> so, yeah, there is my reason for buying the book. But, okay, here is the autograph. Thanks for reading, Melinda. And he also gave me a bookmark and stuff. Well, no, not a bookmark. He gave me his business card. Yeah, so I'll be, like, emailing him stuff after I read this book. Okay, I'm down to my last two books, guys. Ooh, my stack of books almost fell over. Ooh, okay. <laughs> Next up, I have... Escape from Eden by Eliza Nader. I think that's how you say her name. I've never heard of this book until the festival, but she was there. And I decided to... Well, actually, it's a funny story. Like, I'm not sure if I should be telling this. But I guess I will. <laughs> I got this for free, actually. Like, I, I didn't pay for it. Like, somebody else did. Like, her husband... A actually, no. Okay. Um, this is Escape from Eden by Eliza Nader. I've never heard of this book until the festival, and I saw it, and I picked it up out of a whim while I was waiting for the next time slot to appear. And this is basically the story of Mia, not the same Mia from If I Say Obviously, and she is rebelling against the iron fist of a fundamentalist preacher. Okay, uh, okay, basically, um, this is about the story of a girl named Mia. She lives in a supposed, uh, in Edenton, which is basically, like, the Garden of Eden in, like, a South American jungle. And it is run by a preacher, and her mother is completely lured by the idea, but Mia herself does not believe that this is, like, paradise. And so she rebels and she escapes from it with... Gab with Gabriel, the new boy. <laughs> but then, on her way of escaping, she discovers scandalous secrets and dark things and other other mysterious things that always happen in book plots. So, I looked it up on Goodreads. It's gotten very, pretty good reading ratings. So, I'm actually looking forward to reading this. Yeah. So, here is her autograph. Oh, she's a really sweet lady, by the way. She's a mother. She had her daughter, like, sitting on her lap while I was getting it signed, and it was really cute. Melinda, thanks for reading. Enjoy. Well, thanks for reading, Eden. My bad. <laughs> so, yeah, there's that. And last but not least, okay, book pile, don't fall. My final book is Matt De La Pena's The Living. He was also at the same signing as Brendan Keeley. And this will be my first book that I have read by Matt, but he has apparently written many other award-winning books. So I'll probably look those up too. But, for now, I have The Living. And this is the story of... What is this kid's name? Goodness. Of Shy. Yes. This is the story of Shy. He takes a summer job on a cruise. And then, like, a big storm hits. And he gets stranded on an island with... Um, a girl on the cruise that he really, really hates. And this is basically, I think, their survival story, pretty much. So, I'm really looking forward to reading this as well. Sorry, that was my, that's, that's my ringtone right now. <laughs> if you want to know what the song is for my ringtone, I will also post the link at the bottom, I guess. <laughs> okay, so here's the autograph for Belinda. Meet you in the ocean, Matt. So, I'm really excited to read this, too. Alright. Alright, book pile, please don't fall. Oh, God. Okay. So, that is the end of my NYC TAF autographed book haul. I will see you guys around while I try to stack these books. Wait, actually. Let me see if I can do this. Okay. Okay, wait, wait, hold on. Wait, first let me say bye. Bye, guys! <laughs> <laughs> Bye, catch you in the next in the next video. Oh, okay. Oh god. Oh god, no wonder this is it's so hard to do these things. Oh god. Oh, oh. Oh Jesus.
Oh my god. Oh, oh, oh crap. Oh crap. Oh wow, how do people do this? Jesus. Okay. Those are all 17 of my books. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah.